Hello all you hardcore boxing fans out there, how you doing? It's Big Porky here. Uh, hope you're alright. Uh, just a quick video. Uh, I was thinking earlier and I thought, what can I do a video about? That's no, not, not just everyday stuff, something that I can... No, that we can put in, put in background for when there's not much boxing on. So, I thought... Take this off. Done me any of these. I thought I'd do a video about trainers, you know, fathers uh, who, who are training the sons. And I thought, you know, I'll see how many I could think of, you know, off the top of my head. Uh, you know, there's like uh, Mick Whale, uh, and Josh Whale, that's one. Roy Jones and his dad, two. Peter Fury and Huey, three. Uh, Kenny Porter and his son, uh, Sean Porter, four. Jimmy Tibbs and Mark Tibbs, five. Uh, what else is there? Joe Fraser and Marvis Fraser, Marvis Fraser, six. Just get a crack of beer open. Uh, Joe, Joe Kalzaghi. Seven, is it? Uh, Seb Jordan, his dad, eight. Josh Warrington, nine. And his dad, uh, Sean O'Hagan. Ten, Floyd Mayweather. Is that ten or eleven? Either way, th there's a fair old bunch there, but you'd have to say out of all them, Carl Zag is probably going to get the most respect because they went all the way, didn't they? Whereas... Floyd Mayweather's dad got a four year in prison for dealing cocaine. So there were a break in that relationship when Roger Mayweather, his uncle, took over. Sean O'Hagan, him and Josh, they've been there from the beginning. Mick Whale's been there from the beginning with Josh. Although I believe Steffi Ball's trained him at some point. And Caldwell, I think he had something to do with him at some point as well. Zeb Judah's dad, I think he's had him from the beginning. Uh, you know, it's a good old list, that isn't it? You know, but is it the right thing that a father should train his son? Do they do they get too emotionally involved, or do they overtrain them because they train other guys and they feel that they have to be harsher on the son? If you look at my interview with Jimmy Tibbs the other day at Peacock Gym in, in London. Jimmy Tibbs admitted at the end of the interview that. He, he lost Mark, you know, uh, and I've had a text off Mark Tibbs today about that. I'm not going to go into details about that, but Jimmy admitted that Pat Clinton said to him, you want to go steady, Jim, you're going to end up losing him. Not meaning losing him as a son, but for Mark Tibbs to lose interest in boxing, you know, with his dad being harsh on him. And... Uh, it looks like that's what that's what happened because if you look at Mark Tibbs's record, go on Boxrec and put in Mark Tibbs. Now, there was a period of time where Mark Tibbs was fighting where he was red hot and everybody wanted to sign him, and he jacked in in his mid twenties. Only Mark Tibbs knows why that happened, and he's, uh, I know for a fact he's never spoke about it, and his dad hadn't until he spoke to me the other day, and. So that's something for Jimmy to live with and he said that's his only regret in boxing and for me to get that out of him on an interview I've 
I had, ghost, I had ghost pimples on my hairs and we had a chat at end. Me and Jimmy and I walked him back to his car. He gave me a big old hug. Did a selfie with me and we were quite emotional and uh, for me and I think for Jimmy to get to get that out of him it were a big thing I suppose uh, for him to say that's the first time he's ever said it and I felt privileged to be there it were pretty deep stuff and uh, you can see off camera where I gave him an hug but the camera only comes up to our waists I'll never forget that day Never forget that day, but uh, my little lad's not. My little lad's got to suffer some autism, so he's not going to be a boxer, is he? And that's that's a big regret for me. But uh, to be able to train your kid, it must be really good. I've spoke to Peter Fury a lot about this at times, and it's really hard because you've got to, you've got to uh, show you've got to show there's no favoritisms in the gym. Uh, I've been in gym many a time and I've felt that Peter were a bit harsh on Huey. But he, it's like Brian Clough in it with Nigel Clough. They can't be seen to be giving any favours out now. Nobody's saying Mark Tibbs didn't have any, have any talent, but did his dad overtrain him? Were he harsher on him? I don't know. It seems that maybe his dad were what well, maybe wanting to protect him you see you want the best for your kid if your son's a boxer you're going to want to teach him everything you're going to want you're going to want to put more effort in than you would be when you're training say Nigel Ben he was training Nigel Ben at the time wasn't he you're probably going to put want to put more effort in than even when you're training great fighters like that Nigel Ben beat seven world champions Sugar Ray Leonard and Marvin Agler they beat seven world champions so Nigel Ben's up there, he'll go to Hall of Fame, but maybe Jimmy in his wisdom wanted the best for his Mark, for Mark, for him to do everything properly and be a perfectionist that it it, it pushed him the other way, whereas another trainer might not have took it to that extreme. I don't know, but it's something that they'll probably have a chat about as they get older you now Mark's training fighters now and you know people were tipping him for trainer at year weren't they this year nobody can say he doesn't know his onions he's got 9 and 0 with Dillian White 5 knockouts Richard Rearporte he's got another kid as well he's building a bit of a good reputation down there in London Mark Tibbs he's learnt off the best though hasn't he but getting back to him as a fighter and getting back to fathers training the sons I think it's hard I think so this is why we have to admire what Enzo Calzaghi did with Joe I've heard stories about uh, Joe Frazier being harsh on Marvis Fraser and rushing him I've heard stories about Kenny Porter being harsh on Sean Porter, Zeb Judah's dad, what what we used to put him through punishing training regimes, and other kids in gym were like in shock. Mayweather's dad, I don't know any stories about Mayweather and his dad. I do know that Floyd Mayweather. I forgot the kid's name now. The first guy who beat Julio Cesar Chavez. I know it should have been. Meldrick Taylor, we didn't get it. He got robbed in it by a referee. Richard Steele, but the first guy, is it Frankie Randall? Is it the guy who beat Julio Cesar Chavez? Well, Floyd Mayweather, before he turned pro, was sparring this guy and turning him on his head. And this guy was a world champion and he just beat Chavez. Mayweather were taking him to school in sparring. Now, so Floyd Mayweather's dad probably had an easy job with him anyway. But I ain't heard any stories about that. If anything, the stories I've heard are that Mayweather and his dad used to argue like cat and dog. But I've not heard any stories like that about Jimmy Tibbs. I've heard he's very respected in training. I'm not saying that because I've interviewed him and he's a nice guy. I've heard he's very respected at 
and now some people who know Chris Pyatt and they say that he, he added 50% to his game he won a world title didn't he Chris Pyatt with Jimmy Tibbs so I can see him and Mark getting on really well but were he a bit harsh on him maybe I think it's hard for fighters to to have the dad as a trainer because the dad has to switch off from parent doesn't he to trainer now I've been in Peter's gym with my pal Frank and Robin Reed, and we've been there and we've seen Peter take the sessions and it's pretty serious business uh, I've seen Robin Reed take sessions but it's a bit different to when Peter takes them because Peter's you his dad isn't he it's easy for us to, to sit back we're not fighting men are we we're, we're sitting back and we're observing but I think it is hard for a dad to be a trainer and be a dad as well because you've got to go home at night aren't you and be a dad or you might not live with your son but you've still got to be his dad aren't you after that training session ends and I think that's uh, I think it's an hard game I think it's hard and you want your best for your son and don't forget a lot of these dads have been ex-pros haven't they they know the pitfalls you know one punch can change your life it, boxing's not to be played at uh, but and when I said Jimmy Tibbs opened up to me about his regrets in boxing he said yeah I've got regrets you know I was too hard on my mark and, uh, and I lost him through he lost him as a boxer he didn't lose him as a son because they're like that they're like tight you know like that but maybe he lost him as a boxer maybe Mark lost interest but like I say you go on box right you look at Mark Tibbs record beat some good kids what do you have one loss only 22 and one don't quote me on that it's something around that because I have a lot of box right going around in my head and I just think that I think it's an hard game and I think that fathers maybe they should be involved but maybe they should be like a like a seconds or just as an advisory role if you're hands on I don't, I don't know it's, it's easy to say in it when we're all being critical aren't we speaking in front of cameras it's very easy to be critical uh, now if I had that luxury I could take my lad and get him involved in it uh, if he were that way inclined I'd probably be the same I don't know but I don't know but I, f I felt for Jimmy Tibbs telling me that because he'll take that to his grave probably because he's an honest man isn't he he's a very honest man and uh, it must have been hard for him to admit that to me and by the sounds of it Mark's only just found out because he's just watched the video today uh, so pretty uh, Pretty, uh, pretty uh, what's the word, deep stuff. Boxing's very deep, it cuts deep, doesn't it? It gets us all at it. It's the only sport where we can all be at it. Not earn a penny of it, but all have an opinion. And families can be at it, friends can be at it. People can fall out and do skullduggery and all that. It's a, it's a sport and unlike any other, but it's like a drug as well, isn't it? Wait all week for that beer. It's like a drug, but but some of them fighters that I've just told you about then who were trained by the fathers. Dubois is another one. He's another one, isn't he? Dubois. Dubois one, isn't he? I've got him. Do you have him wrote down? Is he? He's trained by his dad, isn't he? No, his dad's involved with him. I don't think he's the trainer, is he? Roy Jones. We've got about seven out here. Seb Judah, Yui Fury, Josh Whale, Floyd Mayweather, Marvis Fraser, Josh Warrington, Joe Calzaghe, Roy Jones, Sean Porter, Mark Tibbs. Um, I'm sure, I'm sure there's, a, there's, a, there's another one, isn't there? There's another one. Is it Richie Woodall? Richie Woodall. Len, Len Woodall was Spencer Oliver's dad did he train him I think he might have done I'm not sure on that don't quote me on that and some of these kids have gone have done fantastic uh, all really done well all won at least a British title 
Uh, and Mark Tibbs, I, I think that it, maybe it were over, not over before it got started, because if, you, if you've had like one loss, is it out of 23 fights? It's a uh, it's a shame, isn't it? Because you're on your way, aren't you? When you when you've got a record like that. Um, but like like Jimmy Tibbs said in the interview to me, it's easy to lose. Pat Clinton said, "Jim Gustad, you're going to lose him." When probably Jim regrets that, but I think that's a shame. But seeing Mark Tibbs skipping as he's coming up to his 50th birthday the other day, he uh, looks in fantastic shape. I know he can have a row because somebody in Peacock Jim told me when I got there, they were like, oh, are you, who are you walking? Because I'm a biggish lump, aren't I? I'm walking around with a big, big eight ounce gold chain around my neck. People are like, oh, who are you? Who are you? I'm, oh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a Mark Tibbs has invited me here to interview his dad. And then after that, it was brilliant. They were all arranged parking for me. It's a bit hard to park around there. And uh, the, last, the girls in there were brilliant. And I've sent them a card. Big box of chocolates and a thank you card for helping me with the parking situation and treating me with respect. The Karen and Lynn and the other lady who worked there, they were all brilliant ladies that were working the calf there. I had a baked potato with chilli on it. I couldn't eat it all, it was massive. Like that. But uh, I enjoyed it, it was a great day. And I'll be going again shortly. But, uh, but yeah, I think fathers and trainers Fathers, sorry, who train sons in in box, and I think they've got a hard job. I think Peter Few has got an hard job with Yui. Meet Whale, he's got an hard job with Josh. Josh Whale's just lost two on trot. Where's he going now? Uh, is it two on trot? Lost two out of three. He lost in France, then he got robbed, and he stepped up away, and he got beat in Barnsley. You're damned if you do, damned if you don't. But at least they're having a go, aren't they? So they get my respect. They get my respect. Uh, they get my. It's the hardest game in the world, and there's, all, there's that much involved in boxing that, like I said, it's it's easy for people like me, a couch potato, to sit at home behind a camera, looking at statistics all day and thinking I'm ten men. I'm not ten men. You know, I don't like people take liberties with me, but. I'm I'm not I'm not in their league. I'm not these these professional boxers. I give an opinion, don't I? Basically, I don't like doing interviews. To be honest, doing these boxing royalty uh, interviews, but I don't like to do them. But I'm doing I'm doing them, and it's not gonna get you're not gonna get me at press conferences and weigh-ins and stuff like that. You'll get odd one as a favours, but I'm not gonna be full on. I like to give an opinion on it because I'm one of them geeks who looks at all statistics, but it's the hardest sport in the world. And I can understand sometimes why boxers, they want to hold out for more money because it's a short career, isn't it? But they've got to get that balance right. For example, Dillian White knocking back five million to fight for the heavyweight championship of the world at Wembley in front of 90,000 and he knocked it back because he wanted more money and a better split in the rematch or what it the same money but a better split in the rematch well get the fight one first you're getting your chance he might never get a chance Dillian White so who's advising him makes you wonder doesn't it but it is what it is, isn't it? It's boxing, isn't it? It's uh, it's an horrible sport. But when it's done right, it's fantastic. There's that many lows. It's awful. Look, the lows are terrible. Some of the things I've seen are shocking. But then when you get a high, like when Liam Liam Cameron won Commonwealth or when Sam Sheedy won it, Tommy Frank, you get that high. It it beats all them lows. You know, to be involved, to play that little part in it. That's just how I look at it anyway, but it is what it is, isn't it? But it's boxing. But fathers who train their kids, good luck to them all. They've got my respect. Or even having an input in your son's career. It's very, very, very hard to get that balance. But So it is what it is, isn't it? But peace out. Keep on trucking. Keep supporting boxing. It's a fantastic sport. Have I got a volume button on? I'm always checking volume button. I always leave it off every now and then. 
I have visions of me one day getting an interview with somebody who's, which is a big interview and leaving volume button off. But peace out, keep on trucking, keep supporting boxing. And shout out to Harrison's cameras, thank you very much for the batteries. That's the second lot you've gave me, thank you very much. And uh, thank you uh, for helping us as we move forward with channel. So peace out, keep on trucking, bump. <laughs>